Um, for those of you not familiar with BIM, um, uh, per Autodesk at least, uh, Building Information Modeling, or BIM, is an intelligent 3D-based model uh, process that equips professionals with insights and tools to more efficiently plan, design, construct, and manage buildings and infrastructure. I know it's a mouthful, but um, it's important to note that BIM is not you know, software, hardware. BIM is all-encompassing. It is the processes and workflows that you use um, uh, with these tools. So uh, today we are going to explore one of those BIM processes uh, by leveraging the data in the model and the integration between the TopCon and Autodesk products for layout purposes. Um, so let's take a look at uh, some of the products that we're going to be looking at today. Um, today, I know you guys can't see it, but we're going to be using the TopCon DS um, and the FC5000 data collector. The FC5000 data collector is really important to this workflow because it accepts larger file sizes, uh, which allows us to perform the layout task using the drawing file or the DXF. Um, we're also going to be looking at some magnet software, magnet field layout uh, is what we're going to primarily be showing, and magnet enterprise. Uh, on the Autodesk side, we're going to be looking at Autodesk point layout, or it's dubbed APL, um, common abbreviation, and those um, products that this, this uh, plugin sits on top of, uh, AutoCAD, Navisworks, Revit, um, and, and in addition, we're going to be looking at some awesome BIM 360 um, products or, or cloud features that allow you to uh, take this to a whole other level. With BIM 360 Glue, you can host your model in the cloud, and with Layout, you can access that model and actually connect to your, um, your TopCon instrument. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Now, we're showing the DS today, but you can also achieve this same, same workflow with the GT, the LN100, and the PS. Um, to, uh, PPI Group, we service all of these. We service, carry, sell, and uh, provide training and support on all of these instruments. Important to note. So construction layout. The problems and needs are similar across all the various contractors. I mean, accuracy and liability. Uh, how certain are you that this is in the correct place? Well, let's take a look at some common elements that are laid out in vertical construction. When I was surveying, um, we laid out anchor bolts quite regularly for contractors. One of the buildings that, that I was um, laying these out on, the pads that the anchor bolts were on were about an inch off, which meant the plate for the beam had to be refabricated. Had the contractors called us beforehand or had the tools necessary to perform layout, this could have been alleviated. Uh, now things have changed over the years, and we as surveyors started doing less and less of this. Um, as contractors were performing their own layout duties, which is, is becoming the industry norm. So no matter who is doing the layout, we just want to give you the tools and workflows necessary to be successful with this task. Um, another element that was common for us to lay out were embeds. For those of you not, not familiar with embeds, embeds are common structural elements that are embedded into concrete, hence the name embeds. Uh, putting these in the correct location is crucial for structure. Uh, edge of slab, I mean, Edge of slab can also be vital for the structure as well. How high does the concrete go? How far does it go? Is it tiered, etc.? cetera? Um, in addition to the edge of slab, you may also want to collect points across the slab for deviation analysis. Um, as we know, no slab is ever perfect. Um, it's not the pourer's fault. It's just the, the nature of the beast. Uh, well, uh, slab deviation analysis can easily be incorporated in this workflow. It's actually part of the, the software that we're going to show. Now, uh, just like we know no slab is ever perfectly level, no wall is ever perfectly flat. Uh, while we cannot fix the curvature of it or the unevenness of the wall, we can provide wall contractors with the location, whether it be the center of a wall, the edge of a wall, or whatever they need to successfully uh, lay out this, this entity. Um, it seems the MEP industries have been slow to adopt 3D modeling, but they were quick to adopt this BIM process, uh, placing a clevis hanger, uh, such seen here, these pipe hangers, or a trapeze hanger for, for sheet metal um, in the correct spot may not be too costly, but imagine placing a whole row or floor of them in the wrong place. That could be costly. Uh, so MEP firms saw the benefit and were quick to adapt. Uh, we were actually just on site uh, the other day with a client, and they were telling us how the GC had shifted the building about six inches, um, which made all the, the layout points um, off. Um, they weren't working with updated information. So our workflow actually um, 
uh, takes into consideration, you know, working with the most up-to-date information. It's easy to pass this information and update on the fly as need be. So perhaps more costly than misplacing hangers, um, elements that are themselves embedded into concrete are often form, far more costly to correct. Uh, things like pipe sleeves, stub ups, stub downs, they require a jackhammer when incorrectly uh, placed. Typically these issues bring about lots of headaches and they aren't from the noise of the jackhammer. Someone is on site and they are yelling and they are not happy. Some curse words might be thrown around. Um, so uh, what is the solution? The solution is simple. Leverage the data in the model. These items have been modeled, they have a location associated with each. So we can use this information to improve QAQC, reduce cost, and reduce time by minimizing or eliminating the need for rework. So that sounds simple and all, but why aren't people doing it? Well, they kind of are using the model, uh, or at least it, it's been an industry trend to move that way. So while the solution might be simple, simple the leveraging the data in the model uh, in itself is not holistic. Uh, so the subs and GCs are working off the model. They do send uh, information to the layout team. The layout team does their job, um, but then what happens? The information dies. So then you have uh, the owner or the architect coming in, they propose changes. What if something was out of place or what if you wanted to capture that as built information? How do you update the model? How do you know if something isn't correctly placed? Well, the, the solution is simple. Um, you leverage the data in the model like, we, like we've been doing. You export uh, points, you underlay the DWG or the DXF um, by using this AutoCAD uh, Auto APL and uh, TopCon integration. Um, you can export everything, get it to the layout team, let them perform the layout. They get their QAQC or as-built information, bring it back from the point controller and upload it to their BIM or CAD file. From there they can run a compare or a deviation analysis. You can set tolerances. It's uh, pretty interesting stuff. So we've talked about some of the common elements that need to be laid out, the problems with current workflows and the solution. Now to demonstrate how simple this process is, Kurt is going to place some points in the model and then he's going to give those to Dan so he can utilize that information to perform his layout tasks. Hi, Kurt Agley here. So um, I get the opportunity to uh, show you a few different products on the software side. So uh, one of them that I'll be um, highlighting just briefly is um, Autodesk Navisworks. And uh, we'll do just a little bit of that for layout as well. Um, additionally, I will show you um, a little bit of AutoCAD as well, because now and then some of your projects are going to be on the AutoCAD platform as well. So this will be Autodesk Point Layout running there. And then um, uh, mostly I'll spend my time in Revit uh, doing it there. So um, any one of these could be um, just the single solution together like Revit with Autodesk Point Layout um, in order to get those points to Dan using his TopCon equipment uh, in the field. Um, and, and it'll be one of those kind of things where you have to jump back and forth uh, depending on what the project is dictating. Uh, sometimes you'll have projects that are in AutoCAD format and uh, you'll have to work in AutoCAD. Other times it'll be in Revit format and you'll be working in Revit. Um, Autodesk makes about uh, 710 products, so I um, surely can't show them all, but I'll, I'll give you a little flavor of each of them here. So um, this is uh, Revit that we're seeing right now on the screen. Um, I'm going to do um, uh, pipe hangers with uh, Revit I'll be working on, trying to get those points in the field to the field uh, for Dan to use with TopCon equipment. Um, I'll use duct hangers with AutoCAD, and I'll use... Uh, concrete uh, form layout uh, in Navisworks then. So uh, one of the things that I'd like to do is uh, make sure that uh, the point right here at the top of each one of these hangers uh, is captured and relayed to Dan in the field. So I'll get to that soon. Um, the other thing that he'll be able to use uh, as he's working is uh, grid line locations. So um, this is another common one where we say, um, I'd really like to know where grid uh, D and 15 cross over. That point would be helpful in the field and for him to know where that is. So um, with Autodesk Point Layout, when I installed that, um, it 
sought out the fact that I had AutoCAD products, Navisworks, and Revit, and put the same uh, tools in each one of those products. So here, here it is in, in Revit. Um, I'm going to use control points for this for the, for the grid layout. Um, I'll call um, maybe a point description on here like grid. Um, so that'll follow along on the point description. It's control point. I'll uh, place it on the grid, say starting with uh, point number 200, place it on the grid. And then um, I'm going to tell it to, you know, let, let's not worry too much about each one of the buttons. I'll kind of go through some of them sort of fast. Um, I, obviously, you're, you're going to want a bunch of different options as you're working with this to get exactly the kind of information you want um, to whoever's running the top con robotic. Um, this would be a good one. Uh, pen the grid line name. So remember there was 15D. I want to put that right onto this description. So I'm going to say yes to that. And uh, I'll choose the level of being the ground floor because we actually have the ground floor set at uh, 100, which happens from time to time so we don't have negative numbers. Um, before I hit the finish button, let's just pause for a second and think about this. You're already having to do this to get this into the field. What kind of steps do you have to go through to do that one at a time at a time? I'm going to hit the finish button. And then if you just uh, go down and take a look, you'll see that at each one of the grid locations, um, there's now a point down there. And that point has picked up that that's grid N1, and it's a control point. And I, I kind of enlarged them a little bit so that you could see them a little bit better via this webcast. But um, every single one of those has it on. Now, what if I wanted a tag on that? Well, the point information is actually carrying the information about it being on a control point and a grid N1 or wherever that was. But I have the opportunity to give a drawing background to Dan so that he can use that uh, with, uh, in the field um, to better navigate. So the tag might be useful. So I say, let's tag that. Yet again, another automated uh, thing that is at our disposal within the product. And I'll put some leaders on that and say yes. And now if you take a look here, um, you know, the point has been listed. And if necessary, I can um, move them around a little bit so that when I create the drawing background with this, uh, he'll see uh, the point more readily if there's any, anything being obscured like in this area here. Okay? So now that you know what that process is, let me do it kind of more rapidly on the second floor here. So I go to the second floor. I say, um, I like to do this one, control points, grid points, control points, and start with point 400 and place it on the grid. And yes, append those names and choose a level, level which is the second floor. Go, finish, done, and now tag it with a tag, all of them with leaders. Ta-da! So anyway, it's just that easy with that. So I got, I got step number one done in the process here. Um, I'm going to loop back on Revit in a few minutes and show you a little bit more complete workflow there. But I promised that I'd show you a little bit of how this looks in AutoCAD, for example. So here we're dealing with duct hangers. So you can see the duct hangers uh, sticking up. Um, I'd like to capture the point right at where the um, top of the hanger uh, meets the structure above and pass that on to um, whoever's running the Topcon equipment. So um, here's this big automated button. So I got a big Fisher Price button in there. I hit automated. Um, in this case, we're talking about hangers. Um, I'll say duct hangers. Uh, let's start with number 100 on them. Um, and uh, for example, in this case, instead of trying to pick up on the grid location, I'm going to pick up on the size and the uh, type of hanger. So a strut hanger, a clevis hanger, what, whatever kind of a hanger we're working with, uh, pick up on that size and pass that over to him as well. And let's say, go ahead and do that for me. Say OK. And I'll, I'll just pause for a second. If you look, you'll see a little uh, pink uh, text start to show up as it rakes its way through the whole file. Uh, dropping in point after point, and in, in the AutoCAD land here, it's actually tagging them at the same time. 
Um, I could do this into a different view, but I chose the 3D view uh, to create it in Fortia. So that's what it looks like in AutoCAD. Well, we can show you more of that in any one of the platforms if you so desire. Okay, so with that, let's go over to Navisworks next and, and take a look and see what that's like. Now, Navisworks tool palette, I'm using Navisworks Manage, but um, this could run on top of Navi Navisworks Simulate as well. Um, here in Navisworks, um, I was a little surprised that to find the Autodesk Point Layout tool palette in Navisworks after the install there because normally when I think about Navisworks I think about it as a model aggregation tool and exploration tool where I can do clashes and the like. Um, I have did part of the model already where I've selected some of these buttons over here and, and pr created uh, points which uh, Navisworks traditionally is not a point creation or like if I wanted to draw a wall for example I would go back to Revit or AutoCAD to draw that wall to actually create the geometry. I left a couple of these undone though so you could see what the process looks like. So what I'm, what I'm looking for are the corners of this footing so that uh, in the field they'll know where to set that up uh, for the forms. So um, I say I'd like to mark the selections on those and I'm going to use uh, the geometry of that at all four corners. You can just do the bottom and the top if you'd like to. And um, I'll use um, a wall point for that and tell it to be stake out and go. And go. Oh, I need a number. 100. Here we go. Okay. All right, um, I, the points have been placed just that easily. I'll, I'll set a color here before I leave this one so you can see a little bit better because uh, it's kind of white on white. And if you take a look here, white on gray anyway, um, there's the points that were placed that would be part of the export for a point file um, if I was handing that over to Dan later. So with that, uh, let me go back over to uh, the Revit session once again here. Uh, let's let's take this workflow a little bit farther. Um, I did what I've done so far in Revit here was I did the grid lines and I have those points ready to pass over to Dan uh, in the field. Um, with that, um, I'm next. What I want to do is give him uh, some control points so that uh, he can uh, know where amidst all that gravel and construction equipment and steel being uh, put in place where um, my points relate to the model. A little bit earlier Joseph talked about uh, a model getting shifted by six inches. Um, this is the way that we're going to uh, control that and make sure that he has that information in his hands. So um, I placed a couple of control points in the model and Dan will replicate those same uh, control points out in the field. I have mine pretty close together here because we're actually working in a conference room for this. Um, but I, you'd want to keep them farther apart. Dan will describe more of that to keep your accuracy up. So this is a control point once again. And I'll say um, on the description I'd like to tell it that it's a control point. Um, I'll place the points on uh, this one and that one and done. Okay, so now I've got my two points placed out there that will become the control points along with the grid if I so choose to uh, hand that over um, that will get placed as well. Okay, um, back at, at on, in 3D land here now I have what I described earlier the end of each one of these uh, strut hangers and clevis, uh, clevis hangers that uh, I'm going to want to uh, relay the point there as well. Um, now I could start going through the model pick, pick, picking on this. Um, we actually have an automated button for this as well. You'll see for your discipline, you'll see some for conduit, for pipe, um, slabs, walls, and the like. I'm going to use the hanger for this one. And uh, this is a pipe point that I'm going to create. And I'll start with a starting number, say a 600 on this stakeout. Um, I'm going to have, you saw a little bit earlier, I, I picked up on the, the type name. So um, I think it would be helpful for him to know 
Well, like in the same way that I did grid description, you know, N1, for example, this one would be helpful if he knew what kind of a hanger that he should be using at those points. So that's more valuable information. I can delve right into the Revit model and pull that out and uh, tell it to go. And boom, it's already done. And once again, I kind of enlarged them into big blue sugar cubes so you could see them a little bit easier. But uh, all those points have been placed as well. So I'm almost there. Um, I could go directly right now to the export button. But I wanted to show you uh, yet one more um, circumstance that no, but no doubt you'll run into. Um, not everything is going to have a, a magic button uh, for each one of these. For example, these uh, embeds that uh, Joseph was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, there's no embed button up here. Um, Autodesk can't think of every circumstance here. So now and then you will have to go to, to a manual process to get that done. So um, I thought I'd show you just a little bit of that for manual as well. So this is a wall point and um, I'm going to start with say point 800 with that and I'll call it uh, embeds so that that'll come along with the description as well. And uh, we'll place that by element. Uh, so I'll go ahead and drop one in here and in here. So you can see that not always are you going to have this great opportunity to just do a crossing window around everything, but I'm placing them at the um, tops of, of each one of the uh, top center of each one of the embed uh, embeds here. Okay, and then finally um, I say, yep, I'm done selecting those as well. Okay, so now, um, now I've got the manual ones done, I've got the grid done, I've got two control points or, you know, you might want five control points um, with, with this, and then the pipe hangers as well. I'm ready for the export. So I'll go to export, the point order that I'd like it in, uh, what kind of units I'm working in, whether or not I'd like a background drawing file. Uh, to go with it, and um, whether or not, uh, you know, what the name of the file should be and where I'd like to place it. Um, I can also filter from there, but like in this case, for example, um, I'd like the control points in the embeds, but um, uh, maybe I've already given Dan the grids already, so I say, you know, let's just take the hangers and let's take the control and the embeds and leave the grid behind in the point set and say okay to that. Um, additionally, you know, from a workflow standpoint, I might be creating two different jobs here for Dan and Joseph who are both out there with um, Topcon equipment uh, uh, working in different parts of the building so I can uh, farm that out as well. Now, um, Autodesk has and TopCon have always been good partners, and you're seeing this um, uh, come out right in the products themselves now. So as I'm working with Autodesk Point Layout, you're seeing the magnet field button that showed up um, a few months ago uh, right in the product. So what they're doing for us there is uh, an example of these two companies working very tightly together to uh, look at the workflow um, that you're having to go through in the field and making sure that you have uh, the tools and the information necessary in order to get this jo job, done, done, job done with uh, fewer errors and um, in a more timely fashion. Um, I'm going to give a point file to Dan. Um, I'm going to give Dan a drawing back ground, but there was another element of communication that had to happen in the past, or you can still continue to do if you want to, and that is I had to give Dan some information about the job, like what kind of units I was working in. And um, this uh, magnet field, which is the software that Dan will be using, he'll show you in just a moment, um, I can create that field file for him uh, so that we don't have to communicate that anymore. So, uh, okay, here we go. So um, I say okay to that, um, and I already created it once. Here's 112 points going out, and then it says, what do you want to be the background for this? 
I think I'll use the ground floor plumbing plan and make a drawing file for him. And away it goes. So uh, with my network connection, uh, we'll see uh, how this works with GoToMeeting competing with this. Um, it'll contact, in this case I toggled on the uh, magnet field job to be created automatically. Um, it'll create the um, background drawing file for me. It will um, create the point file for me. And then it will contact um, Topcon's uh, magnet enterprise site because I toggled that on. And it'll stop and say, you said you wanted a job, a magnet job file. Um, anything you'd like to change here? And look down in this area at the bottom of the dialog as I say, um, that looks good. Uh, go ahead and create this for Dan. And you'll see it go through and progress. Uh, and it's done <laughs> um, already. So uh, now, now I've got the job file that's been created. I Back to the PowerPoint for just a moment before I hand this over to Dan. Um, the, the file that I created from the comfort of my air-conditioned job trailer or from the office in downtown Seattle, uh, I've pumped so that uh, Dan can get a hold of that and log in with um, Magnet Enterprise uh, if he has a login to that. Now, there will be the file um, types that I've created for him at his disposal, but um, this is a dashboard that you can use uh, for project information to make sure that communication is, is amped up and uh, available to him in the field. Now, if you don't want to use that, um, that's okay. Um, big old uh, Fisher, uh, you know, big picture of a uh, thumb drive out there that I put. Um, just put them on a thumb drive like you're used to and um, hand them over to him or email them to him or whatever method you're using already. Uh, and with that, uh, let me pass this over to Dan. Okay. Is our screen showing yet? Yes. You're behind her. Okay. Web page. Um, my name is Dan. Um, I'm uh, with the PPI group here, and uh, what I'm showing you today is the magnet field layout software in conjunction with the uh, Topcon robotic unit. Um, as uh, Joseph had mentioned earlier, there's uh, several uh, products that uh, will the workflow will all be the same. Uh, today we're using the DS in our conference room, but uh, there's also the uh, GT, the PS, and the LN100, which uh, have uh, uh, many similarities, but they will all do the same uh, layout uh, functions that we're going to do here now. Um, so if you're looking at my screen here, what I have is I have magnet field layout. Uh, this is a, a customized version of magnet field uh, data collection software that increases your building layout pro productivity. It's ideal for as-built construction and layout uh, processes in the field. Um, so. The first thing we do is if, uh, as Kurt had mentioned, that uh, we want to get the job file into our controller or into my FC5000. So um, I've already got this screen pulled up here so the software is open, but we simply go into our job feature and into our exchange, and I can uh, either use the thumb drive method that he had mentioned, or I can go over here to uh, Magnet Enterprise and select this and actually connect right to the cloud and uh, if you want to see here, I can create different uh, lists, uh, different project files that uh, I can share with different project managers out in the field. So if there's, uh, you know, multiple of us guys out in the field, uh, Kurt can share that job to specific uh, individuals or to all of us or to whom he uh, wants to share that with. So uh, what I have here is I've already opened up the job, and uh, here's our... A uh, job that he had saved to the cloud right here, and so I could simply highlight this and download that into my job or into my screen here. So in real time, I've uh, actually gotten the job out in the field, and that was uh, uh, using the exchange. Otherwise, like he had mentioned, we can use the thumb drive uh, method as well. Um, 
also, if I bring that file in, as you mentioned, uh, it creates all the units that I need. Everything is pre-set up. I don't have to go through and set those up and have the possibility for error because I laid out something in meters versus U.S. feet. So um, once we have the job in our controller, we actually go to the... Um, let me move something here real quick. Okay. So we go into our setup screen. Now, I've already preset this up because it would take too long uh, to uh, go through the steps and have you watch me set up. Um, not too long, really. It only takes a few moments. But uh, um, there's a number of different ways that we can uh, set up. The real key to it, as he had mentioned earlier, is that we actually need two control points in order to uh, orient our TopCon robot uh, to our plan or to our model. Um, so in this uh, uh, demonstration, I've actually already set it up, and we can actually see here in my plan view that my instrument is set up over point one. Um, I can put my instrument in various locations. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be over a point. Uh, we can use uh, the two points that I specified as uh, references uh, to orient the machine. So if I have it uh, over in the corner, up on a deck, uh, uh, strapped to a column, uh, we can do all of that. Um, just need the, the two points minimum in order to orient that, that device. Um, so let me uh, go here. Okay, I was in plan view already. So here's my plan view. Um, in the plan view, um, we see the drawing file, we see the instrument, we actually will see the instrument uh, uh, tracking the prism in, in our uh, layout and stakeout or uh, collect screens or as built. Um, but in here, you can see here's the points that Kurt had uh, uh, given us out in the field, right here and here. And so I can actually go lay these points out. Now if there's a point that he had forgotten to give me, I can come in and I can actually highlight my drawings and turn other information on and off that uh, is critical to me out in the field and uh, I can toggle these on and so if I actually need uh, an element of this wall right here that you see I can actually come up here into my snap buttons and create points right on the fly so I've just created that point and if that's a grid line a wall intersection whatever it may be I can now use that as a point reference uh, to lay out uh, the rest of the points on my site um, we also have the ability here to uh, highlight, well, not in this screen here, but uh, uh, basically we can create all these points. You can see the snap bar up here in the corner. Uh, there's a number of different uh, ways that we can create those points or locations that we can create those points. Um, I'm going to jump back one screen here just so you can see it and go into <coughs> my... Uh, uh, my layout. I apologize. Here, let me do. Actually, we'll get there in a minute uh, when we get when we get there. Um, so here we go. I've just selected this line. Say this was some uh, element that was important to us on the site. I can actually highlight this line, and I can uh, uh, right click or long press on the screen uh, in order to do something to that line. So here I'm going to create points along that line, and I want to segment it up into uh, let's say five segments. And I can next through that and hit my green check here. And it says that it's created four points. And now I can use those and uh, lay out those four points along that line. And you can see they're right there, there, and there. Um, so very easy to use, very quick out in the field if I needed to uh, uh, add some information. One of the other things that we could do is also, uh, Kurt, if he had the information and he knew that I needed these locations, points, he could actually save it back to Magnet Enterprise and uh, I could uh, download the new file in real time. I could also upload this to him uh, right now and he would get the changes on his end and also in real time. So um, I'm going to go from here, plan. We also have the uh, enter plan right here. And so if I knew point 934 was my starting point and I needed a, a point out in this region out here, if you see that. I could actually come in here and specify a length and uh, an angle. Let's go 45. Well, I'm sorry, that was my length. Actually, I did this backwards here. 45 and 2 feet. So now I can go and I can create actually this point right here just by setting that button. And I can also uh, come in here, rotate this, and I can keep creating points on the fly out in the field for me to use to lay out 
the, the specific features that I have here. So uh, very easy to use, very customizable. Um, we can add lots of points in the field. Um, so coming back to the main menu here, once we've actually got our instrument set up here and uh, we've uh, connected everything and got all the information we need from Kurt, I can actually go over here to layout and uh, I can lay out multiple things. I can lay out a single point, points from a specific list because I may have a thousand points but only you know one through two hundred are important to me. Um, so there's a number of ways we can do this and we can show you these when we come to your office uh, and do a demo for you. Um, but today I'm just going to do a point list here. Um, so a lot of times uh, if I'm uh, on a construction site uh, the points aren't uh, numerical from one to a hundred right in front of me uh, uh, in the direction that I'm traveling. So we choose nearest point and it's actually going to take me from this side of my project to that side of my project and check off all the points as I go. Um, so if I've selected nearest point, I simply hit layout right here. And let's zoom back out so we can see the instrument. And I'm going to lock it onto my prism, which you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner where those snap buttons used to be. I'm just going to hit this padlock to lock it onto my prism. So once the uh, robot has found the prism, you can actually see my location right down here. Uh, that's me right there and I'm actually going to move my prism now and you can see I'm actually traveling wherever um, the prism is uh, where the robot is tracking the prism so as I move back and forth it's updating my real-time location and telling me how to get to the nearest point uh, right down here in my lower right it's telling me which direction to travel and how to get to point 603 right here now, uh, there is no descriptor here on 603, so if I'm curious as to what it is, I can simply hit this box right here, and I can note that it's a uh, clevis hanger. So out in the field, I would have a description and know what that is if I had multiple things to lay out. So as I'm laying out, I'm coming over to this point. I can't reach this point because, like I said, we're uh, in a conference room, so I'm just going to store the position even though it's not where I'm supposed to be, and uh, it's going to prompt me and say, are you sure that you want to lay that out because it's exceeded my tolerance uh, that I've specified. So I'm, for uh, uh, this purpose, we're just going to accept this one. And you notice that it actually transferred uh, to the next nearest point, right there, 675. So as I toggle through and keep hitting next, it's just going to take me one by one to the closest points to me. And we can lay those all out as needed. So. Um, once we've uh, done the layout, if there's new information that I need to collect, um, I can go back to my home button here and I can go to as built. And so as built, here's my map view again, and there's where I am. Um, I need to collect features out in the field. I simply uh, uh, can select a description here. This is a bollard, and I can store that position right there. And that point is stored right there as 103. Um, but also what I can do is if I have this... Uh, uh, a number of uh, different things that I need to collect on this uh, site. I don't want to have to uh, go in here and select each point or each description. Um, I can come up to my magnet button and go to quick codes and show my quick codes. Now I have these predefined lists that uh, I can start uh, collecting points. So as the robot is tracking me, and you can see behind uh, the uh, codes there that it's actually tracking me, and I'm getting to a point that uh, maybe this is the electrical box right here. So I just select electrical box, and it's actually stored that position. And then I'm moving over here to another feature. You know, this is the pipe top right here. And so as I'm uh, touching these buttons on my FC5000, they're recording the positional information in real time. So uh, this is just a way to increase your efficiency out in the field and make it a, a little more uh, quicker to uh, collect your points. So um, also the uh, TopCon uh, instruments, they have the ability to do reflectorless measurements. Um, so if there is an element, uh, and you can't see that here in the demonstration today, but if there's an element on the ceiling or something that we need to see or have in our point file, um, I can simply switch it into a reflectorless mode by going to EDM here and going non-PRISM, and I can start to uh, collect those features and not have to put somebody on a man lift or some, something like that. So once we collect all that information, it'll store that and uh, it's ready to me give back to Kurt. So I can go back out here to job 
and then exchange and I can say enterprise and <clears throat> all I need to do is come in here and say upload current job highlight it upload and it's queued up it's going to zip across here and save it to the cloud and uh, Kurt will have it in order to uh, uh, make any changes on his end or uh, whatever he needs to do and now I'm heading back to Kurt all right thanks Dan so uh, I'll have my screen in just a moment here. So uh, what, what you've seen uh, in this process, and Joseph described this a, a little bit earlier, um, we start with uh, building information modeling software or a, a computer-aided design, right? If you're not familiar with the acronyms, we start with those BIM or CAD file and uh, create points and a background file and then we uh, give it uh, over to the guy in the field by whatever method for him to be able to do uh, layout. Now additionally though what we talked about earlier and then Dan started to show you is the process of uh, quality control and quality assurance or collecting information for as builts and that higher, hired amp up, amped up level of communication uh, back to the office or the job trailer here. So he can collect those points, hand them back uh, over to me, and I can incorporate them into the CAD file. Um, now, uh, what would be really nice would be if there was, well, I don't know, a compare button. <laughs> so. Um, let, let's take a look at this once, and you can see what uh, how the compare works between the two. So um, I, I go to compare, and I can set in a tolerance here. Um, maybe I'm just looking for um, real big problems, for example. And then I take the um, CSV file that um, he's created, and I can see here, um, right now I've got a whole bunch of different filters set on here for... Um, uh, you know, different things that I might look for that are um, different between the two point files, the one that exists in my file and the one that exists in his. Um, in this case, um, he's handing me uh, grids back, and um, and uh, I, had, I don't have them in my file, or I have them in my file and he doesn't have them uh, either way. Um, secondly, um, if I toggle that off, for example, now we're, we're getting down to um, embeds, for example. I can see that they have changed by uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3989, for example. It, there's a point out there that is uh, slightly to in a different spot than I had anticipated. So um, if I change that uh, tolerance, you can see that it disappears. If I um, uh, up it again, I get two more. If Maybe if I change the tolerance to bigger and bigger numbers, I might get, or smaller and smaller numbers, I might get less and less. Um, so which one, which one is a problem here? So for example, this one, and then I, I can just uh, zoom back a little bit here and see, okay. So apparently this is the, this is the area that is causing the problem. Uh, you can see that I have it set to just fade over the top here. How about this one? Take me down to it. All right. And then I can zoom back and say, ah, this is the problem right here. So um, from a workflow standpoint, what we're looking at is um, I have to make a decision at this point uh, what makes sense. Now, uh, what Joseph described a little bit earlier was a, a process where you know, from, from my point of view, in a perfect world, I would totally finish the design, you know, MEP structure, everybody working together and make the perfect virtual model. Then somebody would head to the field with a shovel and we would turn dirt for the first time. You know, it doesn't work that way, does it? Um, it's frightening from my point of view, you know, as an architect engineer at this end, that um, I'm still trying to do that design development while um, people out in the field with hard hats are trying to um, pour concrete. Um, so you know what? Changes happen. Um, and as we are trying to get the communication more readily accessible and accurate between the field and the office or the job trailer in the field, um, 
uh, this workflow of a give and take, I give to the field, they take it, they give back to me, I take it, I compare it, now we make intelligent, intelligent decisions. Uh, something has been put in place, like, like this embed, for example, has been put in place and it's too far over to the left, let's just say. Um, do I tell him, tear it off now, <laughs> you know, um, pry it loose before they go any further, and put it in the right spot, or do I say, we can adjust the design model here to accommodate this change that is going on in the field and it, it, it is actually in existence there. So um, keep that in mind as well. I'm, I'm going to take you back here to um, the PowerPoint slide once again. Um, you know, one thing that we're not trying to incorporate into this uh, brief time that we have with you, we only get an hour with you, um, I wanted to talk with you about something that Joseph brought up way uh, earlier in the um, slide presentation here. He brought up a couple of names like glue and layout, for example. Um, there's a different workflow if you decide you want to incorporate it that uh, Topcon and Autodesk products uh, can deliver um, that's kind of similar but a little different. Um, I start with the editing software, AutoCAD, Revit with Autodesk Point Layout on top of it. I'm showing Navisworks here, for example. I create points, just like we saw earlier, except that if I have uh, the Autodesk BIM 360 glue service available to me, I can push that up into the cloud, and the points reside in the cloud where I can get into them with a browser and manage the point groups and communicate with people in the field and say, Joseph, you take this group, here's your work. Dan, you take this group, this group of points, here's your work. There's a, when I do that, there's an automatic synchronization to another one of Autodesk's cloud services called Autodesk BIM 360 Layout. Um, I know that this is a bunch of words coming at you with uh, TopCon um, model numbers with Autodesk software. Um, BIM 360 layout is not to be confused with Autodesk Point Layout. Okay, they're, they're two different things. Autodesk Point Layout is a product that gets installed on top of Autodesk stuff. Okay, this BIM 360 layout, Autodesk BIM 360 layout is a cloud service. Uh, the difference here is when uh, Dan would get this in the field, he can he have the point file. Um, he'd use his uh, TopCon instrument to lay out the points, but he can use an iPad and be immersed in the model, very similar to what I um, have the privilege of using uh, back in the comfort of air conditioning, uh, walking around virtually inside the model. He can do the same thing and better understand the model and explore the model, uh, once again with less uh, chance for error. Uh, it is additionally round-tripped as well, where uh, he would do as-built collection, like we just saw, and then pass that back over to me for deviation analysis. Well, we have covered quite a bit today. Uh, we've covered the functionality of APL, as well as the various uh, software and hard hardware products uh, from TopCon. Um, that could be involved or that we did involve. Um, now Dan was showing off his PC uh, screen, the magnet field software actually runs on his laptop and he's able to connect that to the, uh, the DS as well, um, as well as the FC5000. It just makes it easier for presentation purposes. Um, so with the interoperability between the two products, uh, layout has never been more seamless. Um, you can leverage the data in the model or the CAD file, um, use the product interoperability, and um, you can give and receive reliable information without any unnecessary or inaccurate data conversions, you know, with th third-party software, that's always an issue. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, again, here's our contact information. Um, please get a hold of us. This webcast will be made available on our website and our YouTube page in the future. Um, so if you uh, would like to have us come on site and actually explain this a little bit more, maybe customize this to your needs, you know, give us a call. Uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, we do these lunch and learns, um, you know, cater to you guys. We come in for about an hour, hour and a half, and uh, spend some time answering your questions and showing you guys all the latest and greatest that we have to offer between the TopCon and Autodesk 
uh, inter integration. So again, thank you for your time, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you.